Why was Taylor Joy crying during the final scene of the series? What does Beth's famous stare at the ceiling refer to? How did the camera and imagery make the storytelling deeper? And what is the hidden meaning behind the Queen's Gambit title? Hi, I'm Dylan. Let's dive in. The book that was never made into a movie. The story of the Queen's Gambit is so well made and so detailed that you can't get rid of the thought that it was based on a true story. However, it wasn't. Yes, Netflix's series is based on the novel of the same name by Walter Tevis. The book was written in the 80s, and since then, many incredible movie directors have wanted to turn it into a feature. Though perhaps the most unexpected man who wanted to adapt The Queen's Gambit was Heath Ledger. Yes, it was meant to be the actor's directorial debut. But as tragic as it was, Heath Ledger passed away and the filming of The Queen's Gambit was postponed for 12 years. That's when the showrunner Scott Frank came in. He realized quickly, the book shouldn't be adapted into a movie. It should be a miniseries. Yes, despite the fact that The Queen's Gambit is only approximately 250 pages, Frank decided to extend it into a show. If you did it as a movie, it becomes a sports movie. Is she going to beat the Russian guy? Frank said. And that's not what the book is about. For me, it's about the pain and cost of being so gifted. Can't argue with that. Eventually, Frank wrote six episodes, but then he realized he needed one more. Because, you know, chess takes time. And it makes so much sense to us, as long as everything regarding chess in The Queen's Gambit was done super accurately. Let's go through step by step the hidden meanings and cool references that Netflix packed inside. The chess games, moves, decorations, and more. Chess elements in the imagery. Did you notice that the colors of the cinematography are reminiscent of the colors of a chessboard? Everything is on a white brown scale in the series, except for some much needed accents, like Beth's red hair for example, which to some degree or another represents her character as a fire on the chessboard. And just look at Beth's figure! She's like a queen piece herself! I mean, her posture, her height, and her severity reminds us very much of the strongest piece on the board. And Netflix uses tricks like that brilliantly. For example, do you remember the scene in the third episode where Beth finds out that Towns is gay? She comes back to her hotel room, which is decorated with dominoes. That tiny detail greatly underlines how puzzled Beth was. She simply didn't know how to behave in a situation like that. Her stepmother asked her where she had been and Beth replied, I was playing chess. But at the same time, we hear the TV playing some movie where the female character says, I don't want to talk about it. And that's exactly how Beth felt in that moment. The Queen's Gambit is full of nice little details like that, especially when it comes to the way the camera moves in the most dramatic moments. Remember the scene where Beth confronts her stepfather about their house? At the beginning of the scene, the camera films Beth from a bit of a higher angle so Beth looks smaller, like a little girl in an orphanage. But when she finds her voice and argues against her father, the camera angle starts to change slowly. Beth is now clearly dominating the situation, and you feel it even more so because of both the acting and the cinematography. We'd love to point out another interesting camera trick, the one with filming the moving chess pieces on ceilings. Did you notice that in each sequence with chess on a ceiling, the camera showed it completely differently? The angles, the composition, the dynamic of the shots are unique in each episode. Why do you think that is? Our guess is that it is meant to show the complexity of the chess matches, because every game is unique, and it's full of various combinations to observe. It's almost like Beth was trying to look at a chess board differently every time. Does this explanation make sense to you, or do you have your own idea about this camera technique? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. The secret behind Benny's appearance. This is, perhaps, the only major character who was based on a real chess player. Well, let's say that he was loosely based. His real-life prototype is the famous American Grandmaster Bobby Fischer. Nope, they don't look alike at all, as you can see. But their stories were pretty similar. Teenage Benny was a real prodigy. He faced chess masters much older than himself and beat them just like Bobby Fischer did, who at the age of 13 won a contest called the Game of the Century. And just like Fischer in his mid-30s, Benny started to disappear from the chess scene. His behavior changed to become pretty extravagant. Fischer, though, became reclusive and even erratic, because he couldn't accept the forfeiting of his champion title. Both Fischer and Benny paid painful prices for becoming super famous while still so young. Nope, Fischer didn't wear a cowboy hat and leather jacket. That was just an artistic way to show how fame affected the American champion. And what about the knife that Benny carried with him? Why did he need it? The actor who plays Benny, Thomas Brody Sangster, explained to Bustle, I don't think he would stab someone in the slightest. I think that's to sharpen his pencil so he can write down his scoreline more accurately. The Importance of Chess Authenticity 
probably most of you guys are not very into chess, but no worries, we are a little bit, and we'll try our best to make it clear and not too boring. Despite the fact that this show firstly isn't about chess, but about Beth as a person, the showrunners really wanted to make everything as authentic as possible. So, all the chess matches you see in the series are real, and were played in real life by real chess players previously. That's why the showrunners invited one of the world's greatest chess masters, Garry Kasparov, for consultation. Check out how cool the Grandmaster looks while playing. See, those super fast chess moves you saw in the series are a real thing for professionals. And the actress Anya Taylor-Joy even managed to bring her own style of moving the pieces. I showed my chess trainer the way I wanted to move the pieces and how I wanted to kind of flip them over as like a sleight of hand. He very graciously was like, I've never seen a chess player do that, but it looks cool. Taylor Joy added a bit of a magician element in her choreography, which fits really nicely with the fact that her character is a prodigy. Before we talk about what the Beth vs. Borgov chess games hide, and what inspired Beth's famous stare at the ceiling, let's firstly take a brief chess lesson. What does Queen's Gambit really mean? It's an opening of a game that starts with the moves d4, d5, c4. The idea here is for the white player to sacrifice the wing pawn in order to control the center of the board. This opening is pretty decisive and aggressive, just like Beth's style of playing. She feels like she's being attacked consistently, which is, I think is why she's such an attacker on the chessboard. Some viewers may think that the title was chosen because it's beautiful and poetic with no real meaning, but it's not like that. First of all, the title represents the culmination moment of Beth's evolution as a character. Before her final battle against Borgov, she started her most notable games with the King's Pawn opening, which is more specific. Starting with her Queen's Pawn means that Beth is ready to fight tougher than she ever did. Second of all, it underlines Beth's dramatic life. Yes, as a child, she used to feel like she was a pawn. She didn't have any control over her life. Even her mother chose to sacrifice her in that horrible car accident. But when Beth grew up, she didn't want to feel like that anymore. She didn't want to be a pawn. She wanted to be the queen. She wanted to turn her life into a chessboard and to sacrifice her own pawns, which she kind of did with the men that surrounded her. Admit it, Beth is a heartbreaker. Closer to the end of the series, Beth easily manipulates men and gets what she wants from them in order to improve her position, which is super similar to the chess ideology of a gambit, right? Now that you know what a queen's gambit is, let's talk about the hidden meaning behind Beth versus Borgoff's final game. As we've already said, every game you see in the series is a real game that was played in real life. And the match in Moscow is no exception, at least the first part, which was taken from the beautiful game between Ukrainian chess master Ivanchuk and American chess master Wolf. Yes, here Beth represents the moves of the Ukrainian player. And there are a couple of very interesting moments here. First of all, the original game finished with a draw. So that's why it was reconstructed by Kasparov and his team in order for Beth to win. And Borgov adjourns the match exactly at the moment where the real historical game turns into a fictional one. So the second part of the Beth versus Borgov chess fight is all made up. Second of all, there's a really great move that Beth does and that perfectly suits her character. She starts with the queen's gambit, sacrificing her pawn, and right towards the end of the game, she sacrifices her queen, which is a pretty rare act in the world of chess. And again, dramatically, it was chosen for a brilliant reason, sacrificing the queen and getting a new one. By pushing a pawn to the end of the board, Beth was renewing herself. She doesn't want to be the woman she used to be. Addicted, selfish, self-isolated. Beth wants to rise above that. She wants to become a better person. And in terms of chess language, that was simply perfect. And third of all, and perhaps the coolest chess reference in the series, is that Vasily Ivanchuk, the Ukrainian chess player, whose moves were used as a basis for Beth, likes to stare at the ceiling while he's playing. Yes, we can't be sure that the whole storyline of Beth seeing chess pieces on the ceiling was inspired by Ivanchuk, but no doubt this is a very interesting coincidence, isn't it? What happened in the finale? Most of us were surprised by the very final scene of the show. Beth was at the very top of everything she'd ever dreamt about. Why then did she leave her security car and walk to a Moscow park to play chess with a random old man? There's definitely a dramatic explanation for that. Just remember how Beth started her path. She was a little girl at the orphanage that was willing to play chess. At the beginning, it was not about competition for her, but about the game. Though as she grew up, her life was all about proving to herself that she can beat anybody. Her struggle almost cost her everything. It took Beth a while before she realized that she doesn't need to compete with anybody or with herself. Beth could finally play her favorite game with people who love and support her, just for fun and pleasure. Here's what the actress Taylor Joy told Refinery29 about filming the series finale. Every time we finished that sequence, I would just burst into tears because I was so happy for her. 
she has found this sense of contentment, where she wasn't in pain or fighting something so intensely. Isn't that the story arc Beth deserved? Some fans were upset about not knowing what happens next for Beth, but according to the actress, that isn't the point of the finale. Whether she stays in Russia, whether she goes back to America, whether she and Jolene travel around together for a while, whatever it is. Now that Beth is feeling more comfortable in herself and feels like she has a home within herself, I just hope that she's content. Don't know about you guys, but we on our channel think that it's beautiful. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe to our channel, and just as you always do, stay awesome!